Hi guys. It has been a crazy week uh, <laughs> on many levels and many fronts here. But I am still out there on the planet, believe it or not, in one form or the other out here in the middle of nowhere in some uh, remote, undisclosed location on the planet. <clears throat> and, uh, oh yes, my name is Sam Mitchell, and this is Collapse Chronicles. Make sure you understand what YouTube's channel you are on and who you are listening to. So, uh... And it has been a crazy week, and guys, I, I really am going to A, get back to making Collapse Chronicles a more regular feature, and it sounds like we, and, and, and I'm not quite ready to make this promise, but I, I am working to bring back the interviews here on Collapse Chronicles probably starting, I'm going to take a wild guess, maybe sometime around January 20th uh, or January 21st, 2021, somewhere in there, uh, coincidentally enough. So more about that in the future, but while we get through these uh, weird holidays that we have to look forward to, but it is well, it's actually uh, Thursday night, November 19th, but we're going to pretend like uh, it is Friday, November 20th, because I just got my Manga Bay Roundup, so we're going, this will be this week's Ecological Meltdown Roundup rant, where we uh, head over to Manga Bay like we do every week for see what's on the minds of Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at Manga Bay as they bring us their weekly laundry list of assaults against our collapsing planet. So take it away, Rhett. What is going on here? Uh, I'm only... I'm not going to get to all of these. Oh, we have an anniversary. Yes, we have a deadly anniversary do you believe it has been five years since the Rio Doce disaster, which is Brazil's worst, well, single environmental disaster? It was November 5th, 2015, that the Fundal Iron Mine Tailings Dam failed, pouring 50 million tons of mud and toxic waste into the river, polluting the river, contaminating croplands, devastating fish and wildlife, polluting drinking water with toxic sludge for 400 miles. So take a wild guess. What is the update? Five years later, the industry cleanup has failed to restore the river and the watershed, with fisheries and fields still poisoned. Access to clean water remains difficult, blah, blah, blah. Uh, gee, what a surprise. Okay, I love it when they ask a question could China, could China become a partner in Galapagos marine conservation? Yes, China is going to become a partner in the Galapagos Islands marine conservation, like Sancho Panza is going to be a partner in Save the Chipmunks Foundation. Yes, this is our weekly dose of knee-slapping hopium. Uh, but here's a more, let's get back to reality. From the Galapagos Islands, let's get back on the mainland of South America and draw some realistic dots between South America and China. 
multiplying Amazon River ports open new Brazil to China commodities routes. Can you say the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative? Nearly 100 major industrial river ports have been built on the Brazilian Amazon's major rivers over the past two decades. Yes, many of these projects have been internationally financed, can you say, you know, the Bank of China, and built by companies with little government oversight, do you think so? These 100 ports and multiplying like mushrooms by the day have transformed the Brazilian Amazon, opening it to agribusiness and the export of commodities, especially to soy and especially soy to China and the rest of the world. And you will not believe that, that this boom in port infrastructure often comes at the expense of the environment. Wow. Today, more than 40 additional major river ports are already planned in the Amazon rainforest on the Tapajos, Tocantins, Madeira, and other rivers. Projects, again, being pursued largely without taking socio-environmental impacts into account. Yes, says indigenous leader Manuel Munduruco, quote, What resources do these soy men bring to our city? They only bring destruction. Yes, uh, you will not believe this. This for anyone not not aware of this. Across Indonesia, hundreds of communities are in conflict with companies seeking control of their resources. Wow, I have never thought of this that across Indonesia and everywhere else on the planet, hundreds of communities are in conflict with companies seeking control of their resources. Huh. Yes, let's go over to look at the, over to Malaysia to look at the latest road building disaster. This would be the 1,200 mile otherwise known as the 2,000-kilometer Pan-Borneo Highway. Yes, the Pan-Borneo Highway. Can you say Chinese Belt and Road Initiative? Activists say that poor planning and an emphasis on extracting resources means that this highway could harm communities and ecosystems in Sabah's forest and along its coastline. Yes, imagine that. Meanwhile, an environmental historian argues that the Pan-Borneo highway planners are repeating the very same mistakes British colonists made in focusing on extraction. Ha! Huh. Imagine that history repeating itself as Britain passes the baton to China. Okay, let's check in with the Yano Mami uh, indigenous uh, tribe Back in the let's back to the Brazilian Amazon. Let's get another update uh, from late 2020. Imagine this one. You will not believe this one. A new report highlights the escalating existential crisis among the 30,000 indigenous people living 
in the Yanomami territory covering almost 10 million hectares in northern Brazil. Data show that the Yanomami Protected Reserve is now in the top 10 areas most prone to illegal deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon. Hmm, would you believe, guys, that the report accuses President Jair Bozo Nero's government of abandoning the Yanomami to the invasion of their territory by tens of thousands of illegal miners. Yes, uh, and of course, when they make some uh, jokes show that they're trying to run the miners out, the miners return as soon as the police leave the reserve. Wow. Could, uh, anyway. All right. As I say, I can't get to all of these stories. Okay, we're going to demystify Sumatra's deforestation. Let's demystify for anyone mystified by deforestation in Sumatra. <clears throat> Sumatra contains some of the largest tracts of intact rainforest left in the world. Yes, which are relied upon by indigenous people, plus a massive diversity of wildlife found nowhere else. You will not believe that these vast forests are under threat from the rapid expansion of industrial-scale agribusinesses that market both palm oil and pulp and paper products to the global market. Uh, environmentalist, uh, you know, and don't forget the talk of don't don't forget the corruption and lack of corporate transparency. Do you think so? Uh, yeah, yeah. Here, here we go for the for for the uh, I, I guess this is the 1984 double speak headline for sustainable business. Planetary boundaries define the new rules. I think for non sustainable businesses, planetary boundaries define the rules. Although, since the very, the, the, the very concept of business is unsustainable. Planetary boundaries. Mm hmm. The, yes, define the rules. All right. Uh, yes, the, 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 this is some effort going on uh, to set science based targets that could help protect all species of nature, including biodiversity, land ocean, water, as well as climate. Yes, this new uh, BS network, that this little corporate greenwashing latest uh, BS out there, uses the concept of planetary boundaries, which refers to nine Earth system processes that contain thresholds for safe operating limits. Yes. Okay. Did you realize that without planting more trees in the tropics, we cannot fix the climate? Hmm. Uh, of course, this article is a commentary. The views expressed are those of the author 
not necessarily of Manga Bay. Anyway, okay, we have a new epic study. An epic study looking at what is killing the trees in the Amazon rainforest. Well, bulldozers for one. Uh, bulldozers, chainsaws, purposefully set fires. There's three things killing the trees, otherwise known as humans. Epic study looks at what is killing the trees in the Amazon rainforest and finds it is not beavers chewing down the trees. A newly published study provides insight into why trees die in the Amazon rainforest and why the death of trees may be increasing. Yes. Uh, anyway, breaking all this, uh, this down. Why are trees dying in the Amazon? Give me a break. Uh, okay, again, guys, I'm, uh, you know, this never-ending debate about megafaunal extinctions. Ha. Huh. Yes. Uh, you know, the, the big thing, uh, you, you know where I fall on this. So this is looking at Madagascar. Madagascar saw a relatively recent mass extinction event about 1,000 years ago when gorilla-sized lemurs, tower, towering elephant birds, and grand tortoises were all wiped out from the island. Ha! Huh. A recently published paper complicates the widely held understanding that humans were to blame for the crash. You know, in talking about you know the, 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 this never-ending old saw about uh, climate change. Uh, causing these megafaunal extinctions. Humans show up a thousand years ago, the gorilla-sized lemurs, the elephant birds, and the giant tortoises end up in the stew pot. Uh, before humans got there, all of these megafauna had gone up and down through all of these climates up and downs. It wasn't until humans got there a thousand years ago. They're talking giant tortoises. They'd been there for 65 million years until humans got there. Put your head out of your ass, excuse me. Sometimes I remember a, another channel that is no longer on YouTube. Anyway, uh, okay, let's do, uh, what is the final wrap up of the 2020 Amazon, Amazon fire season? More than 2,500 major blazes burned across Brazil's legal Amazon, whatever that means, between late May and early uh, November. Many of the fires were on recently deforested land indicative of land grabbers converting forests to pastures and croplands, while other of the fires were within conserved areas and indigenous reserves of concern 41%, according to this study, 41% of the burns were in standing rainforest. Not, uh, you know, we can finally get some data on the big lie. Now, 59%, you know, they'd already chainsawed and bulldozed it and then threw a torch on it, but 41% of the fires this year were in existing, standing, uncleared rainforest. 
Uh, estimates say that nearly 5.4 million acres, otherwise known as 2.2 million hectares, of Brazil's uh, Amazon standing rainforest burned this year an area roughly the size of the country of Wales. Brazil's soaring deforestation rates and the Amazon fires point to yet another problem. Brazil is not on track to meet its 2020 goals under the Paris Climate Agreement, yes. In fact, carbon emissions in Brazil did not fall during 2020, during the corona panic, but instead rose by 9.6%. Oh, I'm sorry, so that was for 2019. Uh, Brazil's carbon emissions rose by 9.6% in, in 2019, the first year of Bozo Nero's uh, term. Um, okay. All right. I guess we, this is just pretty much Brazil news. We have another impending Amazon. We started out with the five-year-old anniversary of a Brazilian environmental disaster, and now we have another impending Amazon disaster known as the Bem Querer Dam in Brazil. Brazil's President Jair Bolsonaro has announced his administration's prioritize for Amazon dams, including the planned Bem Querer Dam on the Rio Branco in the far northern state of Roraima. Uh, the dam is primarily intended to increase the energy supply to industries in locations outside of Amazonia. Probable environmental impacts include blocking fish migrations and flooding a riparian forest that possesses extraordinary bird diversity. Downstream flow alteration would impact protected areas. Uh, sediment flow blockage would impact fisheries. Uh, there, it would ruin some national park. On and on and on and on, and that is one of the dams. Multiply that uh, times about 10,000. Uh, we are not, okay, I'm, I'm not even going to stop at the C word. Uh, nobody wants to hear it. Uh... This was looking at freshwater ecosystems uh, being completely ignored. <sighs> okay, we're just staying in the Amazon. So what happened in October? The October stats are in. Wow. Amazon deforestation shoots higher in October. Do you believe it? Deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon rose 50% in October alone, according to data released uh, by Brazil's own government. Uh, the news came days after President Jair Bolsonaro appeared to threaten the use of military force against the United States should it attempt to impose sanctions on the South American country for its failure to slow rising deforestation. Do you think so? Uh, let's see. Uh, here is a bribery-tainted coal plant 
in Indonesia. Do you think so? Uh, what is going on with the Pura, Purup, Cura Indians in Brazil? The, uh, the Purup, Cura territory of Brazil's Mato Grasso state is home to two of the last three members of this once isolated tribe, down to two in the tribe. The territory has long been the target of land grabbers and loggers with the deforestation rate increasing in recent years on the backs of policies that effectively whitewash illegal land grabs. Kiss goodbye another Amazon Indian tribes. As long as we're looking at Amazon indigenous tribes, you would not believe uh, Brazil sees record number of bids to mine illegally on indigenous lands. You would not believe that. 145 applications have been filed so far this year, the highest number in 24 years, spurred on by Jair Bozoniro's anti-indigenous rhetoric and a bill now before Congress that would permit mining on protected indigenous lands. Mining represents a real threat to the Brazilian Amazon. Huh, imagine that. Okay, let's go. Okay, one more. We've heard enough about Brazil. We're going to finish up over there in uh, Myanmar, or Myanmar, however you pronounce that. Myanmar's new langur monkey species is very beautiful, but critically endangered. Where have we heard this story before? Researchers just recently described a brand new primate species, the Popa langur in Myanmar. Yes. These, and, you know, at the very, pretty much the, the, the day they, dis, they, they, uh, they found a new species of monkey in Myanmar, the species is already considered to be critically endangered with only about 200 to 250 left in the wild. You can kiss goodbye the Popa Langer pretty much the day it was described by science. Anyway, guys, I could go on and on with this. Uh, I realize I'm talking to myself. And I'm really... Guys, you, you don't know what all I'm dealing with out here in my little undisclosed uh, spot on the planet. I, I am under some severe stress right now in my personal life. Some very severe stress that you don't need to hear about. And I, I really am uh, hoping that all of this uh, stuff that has blown up in my life is going to work itself out. And that uh, since I have more time on YouTube available now to devote to, to Collapse Chronicles, I need to get a few things straightened out in my life. I'm going to try to be come back here more frequently and talk about the uh, biggest story on the planet. And I really want to get the interviews going again next year. But uh, I, I'm dealing with some I'm dealing with some issues. So, uh, anyway, guys, get out there and enjoy it while you still can. If I don't see you before then, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, right. Bye, guys.